It's Feedback Gaming. Hello, welcome back. Hello, how are we all doing? Doing great, I hope so. Whew, here we are, boys. Waking the Tiger has landed, and it's time for our new tutorial week. So, first of all, if you've got any kind of uh, mechanic of Hearts of Iron 4, particularly Waking the Tiger, that you don't understand, I want you guys to comment below and say, I don't understand this mechanic. Can you explain it to me, Dave? And I'll make a video on it. If you do see a comment that you do want a video made on, Hit that a little plus sign. Let them know that, yeah, you want a video of that certain kind. And also, guys, if you do want more tutorials and guides, and that is your kind of content, you can vote by hitting the like button on this video, and that'll tell me that's the kind of content that you want to see on this channel. Today, we're going to talk about battle plans and the chain of command in Waking the Tiger. Now, this is a video that I've been needing to make for a while because everyone gets this wrong, and I'm still seeing people live stream this game get it wrong. <sighs> and... It took me a while to get used to it, because I made a series where I played as the Great German Reich, and got Himmler to take over, and in that video, that was recorded only a few days after the early press passes were released, and I made a lot of mistakes as well. And there's still comments on that video saying, Dave, you're making all these mistakes! Yeah, I know, because I wasn't aware how the front line system worked as well. So let's say, first of all, let's just delete all the front lines, move everyone to the center, and we'll merge everyone into a big, fat ball. Get rid of you, get rid of you, there we go, everyone's gonna move, in fact, you know what, we don't, we'll not go all the way there, we'll just go to Warsaw, that'll be fine, that'll be fine. Okay, so, how did it work in the old days? In the old days, you would have, uh, you'd have an army, which we'll call this our offensive army, this one, 16, this will be read by Rommel, he would be our offensive order general, and we'd attack here, and then we'd have our field marshal. Which would be, I'd say, uh, Heinz Guderian. And you draw your front line and have an offensive order. That is how it used to work. Now, that doesn't work anymore. The reason why is every general and field marshal has a maximum command limit of 24. Unless they have a trait called staff, uh, skilled staff. But that's for another video. So, 24 is the maximum at the base level. So, unfortunately, all the stats, which Heinz Guderian has got some good stats, such as uh, Trickster... Panzer leader, he's got four in defense, four in planning. You get the idea. Because he's over his command limit of divisions, he suffers a 100% stat reduction for all of his stats. So it's it's almost like there isn't even a general assigned to this guy. So it's not there's no actual point of doing it this way. But this is how it used to work. So the reason why they changed it is because we were only using like two or three or maybe four possible generals when we've got this huge list of so many generals to use. So now, for the most part, you will probably use two-thirds or maybe even more generals that you've got in your attack pool, which is good. So it actually looks more like war, you know? It feels like the wet, the Eastern Front is going to be considerably larger and it's going to feel like this is a real war scenario. Okay, so this is the wrong way of doing it. What is also another wrong way of doing it? Another wrong way of doing it is to split all the divisions into separate armies, and then draw the front lines. So let's just say this is the Field Marshal, Runstead. We'll put them all underneath the Field Marshal, and we'll draw the front lines individually. Here we go, here. Here we go, here. Here. And there's already one there. Ah, we'll delete that one. Put one here, and then the final one at the top here. And you're probably thinking, what's wrong with this, Dave? What's wrong with this? Well, the problem is, as your armies push forward, gaps will occur in the front line. And if you've noticed, in Waking the Tiger, the AI is a lot more aggressive when it sees a hole in the front line. So I guarantee you, when that front line opens up and there are no divisions defending it, the AI will move into that gap and form this huge, well, this huge tumor that <laughs> consumes all of your front line. And kudos to AI. Paradox, that's awesome. We like that. That means the AI is stronger. <clears throat> But the downside is, as I said, the front line will split and splinter. Therefore, this does not work. Now, what is the correct way of doing it, Dave? So, first of all, we're going to organize everything as if this is an actual real game scenario. So, let's give everyone a general. All the armies. And we're also going to make sure that none of them are over the command limit as well. So, that means we're taking the, making the most of every single general that we've got. I think in this case, we've actually got slightly too many divisions but that's totally okay we can have too many that's all right we'll put a few back yeah we'll put you guys if i would just delete you for the time being because it's not necessary 
It's also a good idea. This is something for another video. But this trait, which is called staff, uh, skilled staffer, you only gain this trait if you're they're commanding 24 divisions or larger per general. So it is usually a good idea to have the full 24 per general. Or even you can get away with slightly over as well. But we'll save that for another day. That's, another, that's a video for another day. So there we go. We are all on the front line. We're going to cancel all those front line orders. We're going to move everyone back to uh, Warsaw. Are they actually... Are they railroading? Okay, the railroad hotkey doesn't work when you select them as a field marshal. We'll have to select them individually. Okay. And I've just merged them by mistake. Whoops. Easy to fix, anyway. We'll go with this. This is not as neat as that. Uh, no, we'll go. no, no, I'll change my mind. I'll change my mind. We're going to try and make this as neat as possible. There's going to be triggered people in the chat if I don't do this. We want to avoid triggering you, okay? There we go. There we go. So there are a, a few shortcomings of selecting the field marshal and then commanding the full army, which you will see very shortly. So we'll select the field marshal. And because all of these armies are underneath the field marshal, you don't have... So usually what... Well, this is how it should work. You select the field marshal, you press the B hotkey for railroad, then you right click. But if you look, they're not railroading. So I'd have to individually click, click all of them. Yeah, I'm hitting the hotkey and I'm railroading them all to the beginning. All right, so as you can see here, this is what you got to look. So the German theater one is the theater, and this is the army group, this icon here. You can change this if you want. You can have any, whatever you like. And this is the field marshal that commands this army group. And this army group has five armies underneath it. One, two, three, four, five. This is the field marshal. These are all generals. Don't be aware, you can actually have a field marshal underneath a general as well. That's totally okay. Okay, um, let's add on all of our generals again. It doesn't matter who they are. You can be more selective when you play a proper game. You, uh, In this case, I'm just selecting one of the guys at the top, which usually are the ones with the most stats. One question that is also important as well. Why do you even want to do it this way? Well, the reason why you want to have a field marshal with generals underneath him is all the generals will benefit from half of the field marshal's stats as well as his traits, which I'll demonstrate that near the end of the video as well. So here we go. So there you go. So... Army group led by Mr. Gunn von Rundstedt and the five army groups. So this is how you should do it. You draw a front line. You can manually draw it by right clicking or you can just do it the old way. You can right click, press Z for front line, click. And what do you know? What have we just done here? We have just created front lines for our entire army. So as you look really closely, this is this guy. So a total of 118 divisions. This line indicated is the field marshal's front line. This is the individual army, the general's armies. And you can see that the front line ends here. Another army here. Another army here. Another army here. You get the idea. So what is evenly done is it's distributed all of the armies over the front line. And get this. When you advance forward or advance back, these front lines will not splinter. There will not be any gaps in the front line when the field marshal has drew the front line. Also be aware that you can actually draw an offensive order with your field marshal. That is okay. It's not the most optimal way of doing it. But the good news with that is the whole army gets planning bonus when it's on the front line. So that's kind of an easy, lazy way of doing it. This is kind of the old way it used to work. So I guess if you want the old, the old experience, this is it. So you've got the front line with the generals with an offensive order. But you can delete this order. And you can draw individual front lines. So this way you can be a little bit more coordinated. So you want to push towards Kiev here. And here, you want to help him and take the river of Kiev. And then here, you want to push towards here. You get the idea, right? So that way, you actually can coordinate what direction your armies are actually moving as they push forward. And there you go. There you go. That is the new battle line, front line system. But there's more to it than that. And this is, I would recommend, the overall most, most, most optimal way of doing it. So let's just say we have a panzer leader. Uh, we'll go with Rommel. So what we're going to do with Rommel is he is going to be coordinating spearheads and pushing forward as a panzer leader. So what we're going to do is say that I don't want this guy to be underneath our field marshal. So we click here. So right now, he's not benefiting from half of the stats of the field marshal. But what this means is if I cancel this front line and redraw it, you'll notice that he is no longer part of this front line. But Rommel has his own army thing going on. So what you want to say is, one of my most important things I want to do right now, 
he's make a spearhead order into Leningrad. So what you're going to do now is all of these armies are going to organize themselves so there's no gaps in the front line and hold this front line. Whilst on top of that, Rommel is going to form a front line here and make a spearhead towards Leningrad. Now this is as close and the most optimal to the way the old system used to work. And this is how I play the game now. I don't know what else to say. This is pretty much the best way of doing it overall. Plus, on top of that, if you want to be really lazy, you can draw just a big front line. But if you want a little bit more precise, you could draw individual front lines as well. And on top of that up as well, you can micro individually if you do want to with specific generals as well. And that's it, guys. That is the front line explained. The new battle plan system in Waking the Tiger. One final note I'm going to say is that just to prove that these... So, let me get this right. Let me just explain it. So, I said before that the Field Marshal's stats and his traits, half of them go towards the generals underneath him. And just to prove that, let's look at one of these generals. So we pick one of them that's already sat on the front line. By the way, another optimal thing you could do as well is add Rommel to a new theatre and give him an individual Field Marshal as well. So that way he'll still benefit from Field Marshal perks as well, half of them. Have we got him on the front line? Let's have a look. Can we move on the front line? Let's go for the super fast speed. So if you look at this this division here, to give you an example, he's got a maximum of 20 entrenchment. So if we were to change out the field marshal to, let's say, Runstead, which has the extra entrenchment bonus, which you won't arrive for 15 days, so we're going to have to speed this up real quick. Waiting for Runstead to arrive. Six, five, four, three, two, one. And he's arrived. And you should know it's when he arrives, the maximum amount of entrenchment is now 27. Because he is a defensive doctrine field marshal. So remember, it's important that you do... Because you could say to me, Dave, like, what's the point then? I'm not even going to use field marshals. They're useless. They're stupid. Well, in that case, you need to use them because you benefit from the stats uh, that are above them. There you go, guys. That is a frontline system. If there's anything that I've missed that you feel like I need to cover again, please let me know in the comments. I need to know in the comments. And if you do see any, if you think of any suggestions for other videos I could make tutorials and guides on, please put them in the comments below. If you see any comments you do like, please upvote them. And don't forget to like this video. Guys, have an awesome day, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.